Teamwork leads to greater efficiency. Whatever be the job, a complete set of people in coordination can make it possible. But a team is usually considered incomplete without a leader. A leader is the one who not only guides, but even regulates or controls the working of other team members. The same analogy can be used to study the cellular organelles. The various organelles are like the in charge of specific functions. And can you guess who acts like this leader here? It's the nucleus. You heard me right. The nucleus is the controlling unit for every organelle. Located right at the center of the cell, it governs the functions of other organelles. But how does it regulate the activities of other organelles? Let's try finding it out in this video. The reason why nucleus is given the status of the major cell organelle is because it contains the genetic material of the organism. Now, what could this genetic material be? If we zoom in this nucleus, we find these tangled thread-like structures. Any idea what these structures are? These are called the chromatin fibers. Are they important to us in any way? Well, they are the most important component of the nucleus and even the complete cell. Because these chromatin fibers enclose the genetic material within them, when the cell has to divide, these long threads coil themselves to form a sophisticated and compact structure called the chromosome. We have come across this term often. It looks somewhat like this. These chromosomes are made up of smaller important segments. These functional units are called the genes. Genes form the basis of heredity in all organisms. That means the similarities and variations that organisms have with their parents. For example, what do friends and family say when they see a baby? She looks exactly like her mother, or she's so much like her father. That's because the newborn baby gets her genes from her parents. Now, let us zoom in a bit more. Any idea what these functional segments named genes are made up of? Genes are made up of molecules of DNA. You heard me right. Deoxyribonucleic acid, abbreviated as DNA, forms the genes. So now if we go in the reverse manner, then we have DNA molecules forming functional segments called the genes. Many such genes come together to form the chromosomes. However, the compact chromosomal structure exists only when the cell is about to divide. So usually, when the cell is in the resting or active phase, apart from cell division, the chromosomes exist as tangles of threads, called chromatin. In other words, chromosomes and chromatin are the same thing. The genetic material is locked in the form of these chromatin threads, present in the nucleus. Now this was about why the nucleus is called the major organelle. But any idea how the system of regulation works? Well, that happens with the help of proteins. The genes present in the nucleus code for specific proteins. These proteins perform various functions that we find it in the cell. So functions right from passing information, communication, or even building structures. All these are carried out by the specific proteins. That is how the nucleus helps in regulating the various functions of the other cell organelles. Unlike other organelles, even the nucleus has its own membrane that separates the inner contents from the rest of the cytoplasm. The membrane, however, has pores to allow entry and exist of substances across it. Also, the nucleus has its own nucleoplasm that is slightly different from the rest of the cytoplasm. Now that we have learned about the ruling organelle in the cell, let us deviate towards the other working organelles as well. Let's try learning about the remaining organelles in our upcoming videos.